Should you trust your calculator? We're going to find out in this video. Okay, I've got a standard Casio calculator here, which is the standard calculator you get at university. Most exams in university tend to remove the calculator towards the end, but I know in first year and before university when you're in school, you typically use calculator like this. Now, I'm gonna show you something pretty interesting. So if you have a calculator, then that's great. Type in these numbers, but if not, I'll be showing you what I get on the screen. So I'm gonna type in five to the power 14, and this is the value that I get out. Now, this value itself is some very, very long value, and it ends in the number five. Now, just think for a moment. If I was to divide this number by two, do you think I'd get a whole number or a decimal number? Now, you might be thinking, Ellie, that's a very obvious question, but what I'm gonna show you is when I divide this number by two, we get some strange calculator behavior. Divide by two equals, and notice we get a whole number. Is that what you're expecting? Definitely wasn't what I was expecting. So you'll notice we have some strange calculator behavior here. Because we had an odd number to begin with, it ended in five, when you divide that by two, we we're expecting it to be 2.5 at the end. And it isn't, we got three. So this is an example of strange calculator behavior, and it's actually not the only example. Now, in order to show this next point, I'm gonna to have to introduce a theorem, a very famous theorem, and that is Fermat's last theorem. Hopefully some of you mathematicians watching will have heard of it, but if not, I'm gonna explain it. So Fermat's last theorem basically says, there are no integers such that x to the power n plus y to the power n equals z to the power n for n as a whole number greater than two. Now, obviously, if you think about Pythagoras, when n equals two, it holds for many cases, but when you go above n equals two, so n equals three, four, five, up to a thousand, up to affinity, whatever you like, there are no numbers that satisfy this formula. And it's a very famous theorem that sometimes calculators show that it fails. Now, obviously we know that it doesn't fail. It has been proved the, the theorem itself holds, but calculators can sometimes show some strange calculator behavior where it looks like some values that we input into this theorem actually hold, which obviously we know isn't the case. So there is a very, very nice example and it actually appears on The Simpsons and he actually writes some numbers that hold for Fermat's last theorem or what he thinks holds. And if we write them on our calculator, we actually get the same values out. So if we do, if we use our calculator and we want to compute 3,987 to the power 12, and if we add 4,365 to the power 12, we get some value out, and it's this value here, times 10 to the 43, very large value. Now, if we take 4,472 to the power 12, we get the exact same value out. So you might plug these values into your calculator and think, oh my gosh, I've, I've found an example that disproves Fermat's last theorem. But unfortunately, that is not the case. It's just another example of strange calculator behavior and what are known as near misses in Fermat's last theorem. Now, Harvard's maths department have an entire page dedicated to near misses in Fermat's last theorem, and I'll link the description below. So the moral of the story is, if you think you've disproved a very famous theorem, just check what calculator you're using. That was the video today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you all in the next one.